Tonight on Plus Politics, we take a look at the SDP's reaction to the outcome of the governorship and state assembly polls. And uh, we address the problem of inclusion of persons with disabilities in political and electoral process in Nigeria. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyam Guru. I guide you. Welcome back. The Social Democratic Party has condemned the outcome of the governorship polls especially conducted in Lagos State. According to the party's governorship candidate, Kunle Utman, the election is a farce. The party also debunked the news of its candidate stepping down for the All Progressives Congress just before the conduct of the elections. It is uh, to be recalled that the governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Lagos State, Badebo Road Survivor, mm -hmm. has also vowed to challenge the results of the Saturday's election announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. He also said that he was saddened by the reports of violence and gross disenfranchisement of voters who came out to perform their civic obligations. Well, joining us live to discuss this is Kunle Utman himself, the governorship candidate of the SDP Lagos State. Good evening and welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, the elections have come and we do not know if they have gone. What's your own assessment of the whole process? Well, I believe that um, I've written and spoken about this election. A different for a first of all, there was no election in the sense of a free, fair, and credible election. Because we also on live TV, technology has developed. We saw fetishism at play. We saw fetish things being placed all around areas to scare people away. We also saw people being shot and being shot dead. We also saw places where ballots, boxes were physically carried. And all this is determination of the party in power to ensure that they won at all costs. So there wasn't an election. What we had on Saturday was a farce. It failed the test of, test of election anywhere in the world. And globally, locally, and nationally, it has been acclaimed to be the worst election in the history of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this is very sad, because the government of the day did all that was humanly possible to ensure that INE gave us a good election. The BIVAS was devised as a system whereby people would not be able to vote for other people. But what happened was a complete nonsense. Let's put it that way. There were areas where they ensured that they believed that they were not popular based on the result of the last election. You're talking of Etiosa area, you're talking of going down, Ali Moshe and other places. They made sure people did not come out to vote. And this new device that they have brought up in their election of bringing Oro out at, in the afternoon. Because I'm a Yoruba man, I never knew Oro coming out in the afternoon. It's a traditional thing that is always done in the night. So the determination and the desperation of Babagde Sonwolu and his government to be returned to power was clear in this election. There was no election. So in the real sense of it, if we look at, if we feel the pulse of the people, and we're able to look at it credibly. I think there should be a re-election. And in that re-election, the APC should not contest because they have brought us back into the stone age of politics. We have never, ever, ever in the history of the Federal Republic of Nigeria seen what we saw on Saturday. So basically speaking, whatever was published was a rogue result. And this idea of you go to court to challenge it is their mantra that they will always alter because they know how to deal with the court system. And INEC itself should come out and say, what they conducted was not a proper election. This is my view. Okay, why are we really so pained? I know that it's painful if an election that uh, was so, there was, that raised so much hope uh, was not conducted well. But we've seen ballot pla uh, snatching in the past. We've seen, we've seen a lot of things that happened in Saturday's election and even on the 25th of February also happened in other elections. What is that very, very critical thing that makes this one the worst, if for, we have seen all these things? First before? of all, I need you to guide me. 
of the election we have held in this country, where they put fetish things everywhere. I also need you to guide me of an election we held in this country where the master tug of Africa, MC Oluomo, made a proclamation that people should not go out if they were going to vote for a political party. I, I, I need the man didn't say it, it was live. I also need you to tell me any election in the cosmopolitan state of Lagos State where a certain set of people have been branded. You understand? Go, don't come out. If you don't vote for our party, you don't come out or else we deal with you. We have also seen an election where there were gunshots. We saw it. You understand? First stack and other areas. We also saw ballot snatching live. So it's not in the past when you do things and it is given a colored report. We saw these things live. Everybody saw it. Everybody. It was on all the television channels, covering from one point to the other. Every one of them. How do you now talk about a credible election? How does somebody now come out and say, I'm the winner? Winner of what? Because the man was the one who corrupted the system. The man was the one who organized all these malfeasances to take place. How can he win the election? There was no election on that day. What we, had, what we had on that day was a disgraceful display of inhumanity of man to man and desperation. Politics is not about desperation, my brother. Because it has been notoriously de uh, described as the government of the people, for the people, and by the people. The ballot belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to a pack of people who will say we are government and we must continue. Whether or not we want to, we must continue. Because for us, we said it too many times in different places, that this particular government in Lagos State that is there now does not deserve to be re-elected. And I think they heard us. We said it. I heard Jando say it. I heard um, that bad boy say it. Even Akim, Akim um, what do they call him? Dixon also said it. The same thing with everybody said this was the process. We had debates, the man did not show up. It never came for any of the debates. This was the only election I know in Lagos State where there was no governorship debate and the governor did not participate. So what are we talking about? The pre, the election, the post-election have been complete nonsense. Let me put it up. Okay, but you, you just expressed some worry about uh, uh, the court system that the party will always tell you to go to court. That's become their mantra. Does it mean that as some people are heading to the courts, you are not thinking about going to the courts? For me, I'm a legal practitioner, first and foremost. And I practiced law since 1985. So that shows me that I have faith in my own legal system. Because this is what I've been doing the last 30 something years, and I have faith in it. Where we are now is not about the court system. First and foremost, what has been put in place, does it pass the test of credibility? This is number one. If it didn't pass the test of credibility of a free, fair election, I neck ought to know that what they put in place, that election was a facade. Clear, let's be clear. So there will have been no basis for them to declare a winner. Whether or not I will go to court, we are looking at it holistically, all of us, all the political parties involved, apart from the party in power and those people who have joined them. There's a likelihood that we are going to file proceedings to test the veracity of this election in court. But how much time do you have? We have 20 something days and we're still, we still have a window of time to do that. It doesn't take time to go to court. When you want to go to court, you brief last today, two days you're in court because all the documents are there for us to present. What we are doing now is we're doing an harmonization. Harmonization. It's not one party. We'll come as many of us as possible to test this election in court and for the court to declare that there was no election. So they should do a re election, maybe. Just for Lagos or for the country? Well, I represent Lagos. So really, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not concerned too much about the problems of other areas. Other areas had their own processes. They had their own problems. Maybe some of those places, they had credible election. But for me, it's only reasonable that I confine myself within my geographical space, which is Lagos. There was no election here. Now, when we want to uh, blame someone, like, permit me to use the word blame, uh, uh, who do we blame in this, in this instance? The political party, the umpire, the security agencies, and all that. All of these 
people needed to come together to make our election credible enough. So even if we want to blame or we want to find out where to start the reforms, where do we go to? We we'll start from INEC. We we'll start from the umpire. Because the umpire is the one that set the date for the election. The umpire is the one that worked out the modalities for the election. They were also the ones that supervised the election, they organized and they conducted it in all these areas. Prior to election, we were given certain assurances. The bill was to work. It worked. We were told that um, the result would be online, prime time. It wasn't so. We still saw manual collation. They actually came out and said, this idea of some people coming to count and count will be in the past. That was exactly what happened. And what they gave us, what we saw. Because if you look at the, the frenzy that they reacted to going to conduct election, they too, in VGC. They didn't do it because they liked the people that were there. They know the number of senior advocates that reside in that place. And they know if they don't do what they have to do in VGC, they will be in real trouble. Now, was it only in VGC? Because VGC was just one case. One estate, big, nice, sophisticated. What about other areas where they snatch ballot boxes? What about areas where they shot people dead? What about other areas in Lagos State where people were not allowed to vote? What did they do? They discarded those areas, they discontinued it, and they went out to announce a perverse result that does not represent the will of the people of Lagos State. Mm. Because oh, why I ask the question is that something like an election is a national assignment for everybody, who, those who are voting, because like you said, the no, you're about, Sorry, you talk about politicians. I've dealt with only one. You okay. talk about politicians. Yeah, politicians, uh, the security the, the, and all. The, the, the security, man. Of course, they were incompetent. They displayed lack of capacity to enforce laws, and they acted as if they had been compromised. As for the politicians, which politicians are you talking about? We have two categories, basically, the governor that is there now, and others that want to sit. The governor that is there now, Bajide Sonwolu, did all that was humanly possible to do everything that he ought not to do. Because for us, he ought to have just given the opportunity to, if he performed well, this is the first time in Lagos State that we are having a governor that is so desperate. And we understand his apprehension, which is due to the fact that his political godfather had just lost massively in Lagos State. And if they had lost that election in Lagos State, it would have been a statement that they wouldn't have found comfortable. But truly speaking, we should still have allowed the democratic process to grow. What do you want people to do? The, for the first time in the history of this country, we seem to be on a verge of those factors that took us to war. For the first time in this country, we are being told Igbo people, we are being told Aousa people, how did we get there? How did we get there? This is a cosmopolitan part of Nigeria. People have married Igbo people. Igbo people have married Yoruba. There is investment here that belongs to Igbo people and to Yoruba people. Dangote is not the name of a Yoruba man from anywhere in Yoruba land. It's from Kano. He has the largest investment in this state. Nobody is saying Dangote is Aousa go back. So we, are, we cannot behave like this. We cannot get ourselves into this obedient state of dehumanization. We cannot draw back. We've made too much progress in this country as a nation than for one desperate Babaji Sonwulu and his people to decide to turn us one against the other. That was absolutely irresponsible. No government anywhere should do that, basically. It's wrong. Okay, but you, you said something in, in opening that um, this government did everything to make sure that INEC delivered a very credible election. They gave everything. But do you think that really the federal government did everything just because they released the money that was supposed to be given to INEC? The Especially after the elections the and statements coming from the presidency. The incumbent president of Nigeria, he said that every opportunity that he could see. That one of the things that will legacy would like to leave behind is to organize a free and fair election and a credible election as his legacy when he's leaving government. He said this, and truly speaking, the way Amana is sounded, we believed him. We believed him. And I believe that by the time they made the necessary amendments to the Electoral Act and it was signed, we also further believed him. And when INEC chairman went to the Chatham House, 
to discuss this election, he also gave the impression that there was going to be a completely credible election. We believed him. So when we went for the presidential election and national elections, we were comfortable with the fact that, yes, this man meant what he said, and he was going to do exactly what he said. So when we approached that election, it was with a very, very positive mind. But by the time the election was over on that day, we knew that in as much as it could be the wish of the president to deliver free, fair election, Mahmoud and the chairman of INEC and his people, they were not on the same page with him. What they did was nonsense. But the president has come out plainly and uh, openly to say that the uh, election was credible. Maybe, maybe the election that he watched was confined to a certain place where he sat down. But if he watched the election all over Nigeria, I am sure he will not say what you said. He said, I didn't read what you said. But if he did, possibly he was just somewhere watching his own election and voting and preparing for some trips abroad. But for here, everybody saw locally, internationally, nationally that that was not a credible election. So I don't think we should spend too much energy on whether or not it was credible. It's recipe salo The fact speaks for itself. Okay. Now we have reached this point in this electoral process and everything. Uh, President-elect has been declared. Governors-elect have been declared. Senators-elect and everybody. They have been declared. Especially, uh, or finally, we have something, somebody from Abia State who is of the Labour Party who has been declared uh, OT has been declared as governor. Um, but the process goes beyond just voting. Since you say democracy, and we know, is for the people, by the people, you know, it's a, a government of the people. So now that it has reached this stage, there are litigations and every other thing, how can the citizens who are also pained, or who may also be pained, it depends on where you're standing anyway, uh, how can they be a part of this process to either reclaim the mandate if it was taken, or to strengthen the process of electioneering in Nigeria, or to see that justice is being done, if they are seeing it as justice not being done? How can they be a part of it? Because now, everybody who is going to court is either someone who contested or a political party that feels aggrieved and all that. But what about the people themselves? What can they do? First of all, we have used the correct acronym. We said president-elect, governor-elect, mm -hmm. senator-elect, everything-elect, elect as it were. That shows you that the, the, the party is not over. Because that elect between this time and the accredited time, it may just be nobody. It can just be removed and somebody else will replace him. This election can also be affirmed and there can be cancellation and there can be re-election. This is for the courts to decide based on available evidence in respect of these elections. Now, what would the people do? For the people, well, what can they do? Basically speaking, we are a civilized society. We are a democracy. When it suits us, we say we are one Nigeria. So let's assume for the purposes that we are mentally one Nigeria, but we are spiritually not one Nigeria. Because when you start this world war, war cry, it's not good for this country because we have paid a price. There was a civil war in this country, and if you follow the civil war process, this was how it started. One tribe sus suspending I mean, suspecting another tribe, and they feeling unsafe in their geographical space and going home to go and gather and to fight. We pray that will never, ever happen in this country. That is nonsense. We'll be doused, and we can continue as a people. This is number one. What other choice do the people have? We pray that we forget and forgive the, the idiosyncrasies of this election. And we look at it from a point that we have a nation where we can move forward. For me, for example, one of my friends, my very good friend, I've known this guy since 1973. His name is Abdurrahman Aramide Twins. He's like a father to my children. What he has done to me during the course of this election is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. It shows that this election, as conducted and as the result was, can actually tear two friends apart. I also have a member of my family, my own brother, the same thing happened. Is my immediate junior brother. His name is Fatu. The same thing he did. You can't find any other election doing to people what this is doing to us. As a matter of fact, you find somebody, some of these people purveying a speech, sending videos that should never ever be circulated in any system. They don't care. They want to be more Catholic than the Pope. Somebody said to me, it doesn't matter because I work in Lagos state government, I can be stupid. 
It's not the way people should act. Family is bond. Brotherhood is bond. We have found ourselves in this situation whereby brother doesn't talk to brother, brother is fighting brother, sister is fighting sister. People have intermarried. If you marry an Igbo woman and you're a Yoruba man and this problem starts, what do you do with your wife and your children? People worship in churches. They don't talk about Igbo. They don't talk about Yoruba. They talk about Nigeria. What happens in this situation? We worship in mosque. Nobody cares who you are. We go to the mosque. We do our tarawi. We walk away. Now, what this has done to us, it has become extremely divisive. So what we now need to do, let's leave election and let us look at our nation from the national perspective of a good nation. And what we need to do now is we need to heal the wounds. We need to ensure that we go back to where we are prior to this election. We go back to where we are. My best friends are Igbo people. My mentors are houses. My people I worship with every time. They are houses and they are Muslims, they are Yorubas. So what, what do I care where you come from? What matters to me is that you are my brother and the brotherhood has been fought since the year 1900 when Nigeria came into existence and people have paid the price for this independence. They have paid the price. So if we have some desperate politicians, we have some insane human beings who simply believe that what they now need to do is to be controlling the system and draw and destroying what we have. We need to be careful. We need to be very, very careful because we cannot allow a civil war to start. We cannot also allow a capital flight from this Lagos. Lagos is cosmopolitan. We don't want to go into this no man's land, no man's house. It belongs to us as indigenous of the state. But the prosperity that Lagos has is because other people have come from other states to invest in the state. They have come, and there are foreigners that are here. We have Lebanese people that are in Nigeria that generations of them have not been home. They have found northern Nigeria to be their home. I have friends. My best friends are Lebanese. Now, I sit back now. I start doing some spiritual, um, what do you call the distillation? When I want to talk to you, I want to find out you're about your evil. When I want to speak to you, I want to... No, we shouldn't do that to our country. Because some people have shed their blood for our independence. So it should not be about election for the Social Democratic Party. For me, when I went into this election, it was not winning at all costs. And if you listen to me, everywhere I spoke, I continuously emphasized this. It's not winning at all costs. I was going to contest the election to defend the integrity of my race. And I think I've succeeded. I came here, I went everywhere saying things that I can feel that I change it. I said the San Gross market was not developed, was abandoned. Me, I passed there two weeks ago, they have started building the market. So somebody's listening to me. I've been speaking about this, the railway line thing, and I've heard that it's going to be done before May 29th. Somebody's listening to me. I spoke at about a whole year, government is listening to me. So for me, it's victory. It's victory. Because to remove an increment will not be the easiest person for me to do. So what I wanted to do was to test waters. And I succeeded in doing so. I remember, remember, even in our party, there were moles there. We had to contend with different misinformation by the APC. There was a day they came, they said Kule Utman has stepped down for Baba Jide Sawolu. It was everywhere. And nobody has shown me proof of where I sat down with anybody to step down. There was also this man, when the election was over, he says he's the acting chairman of the SDP. Huh? And every paper carried this man, seeing that the SDP is congratulating Baba Jide Sawolu. Now, what they succeeded to do, even our House of Assembly members, they planted moles there. So they should try to be a fair-minded political party. They shouldn't do this. Why? What is your business with SDP? Every information that they released was on their official platform. There was a time they carried Olori. One time she was not wearing her hair, she was saying, hey, I'm leaving SDP. Another one they carried her to their secretariat in Alausa to also say, I'm leaving SDP. Why did they not mind their business? What was this intermeddling with intermeddling someness with the affairs of SDP? Now we are going to rebuild our party. We are going to bring in credible people. All these moles will find their way and we'll be ready for the next election, inshallah. Okay. Before then, 
just test running this election, whether okay. or not it is free and fair. Just, just finally, um, so that we, we wrap up now, uh, you talked about the healing process that has to begin. Where do we begin from? Where do we begin? We begin from tonight. Tonight is Tarawi. So we of the Muslim Ummah, we are going to fast for 30 days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined us in the Holy Quran. Before you start Ramadan, forgive. Forgive whosoever had wronged you so that you can find the pleasure of Allah. Number one. Number two, the Christians are also fasting now. Is that not correct? So you see, we are in a period of spiritual healing. And during this spiritual healing, we all must see, pray for our nation, more importantly, to remain one indivisible nation. Also, pray for whoever emerges as rulers, either in the assembly or executive in this tenure, to love the people. We should not have this ostentatious mentality whereby government is just a place for you to make money. Go there, serve the people, work for the people, and let us have a better, rewarding future. We cannot continue like this. Put drugs in the hospital, do what you have to do, make sure the traffic moves, do the railway line, and do all these things. It doesn't matter whether it's Kuli man that is there, whether it is um, Bab uh, what Babajide Sanwuri that is there, whether it's Adel Dino that is there, whether it is Breitwet or Duarte. What matters is we must love our state. And we that are the stakeholders here, we want a good state. We don't want to drive out investors. We don't want buildings to collapse. We want a state whereby people all over the world will come and invest and we will have a better life for our children and for generations after us. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. That has been a marathon one with uh, Sakun Leudman, the governorship candidate of the SDP Lagos State, talking about challenging what happened as the election of uh, Saturday. Uh, if it is credible enough, then we'll see what the coming days will, will hold for us. But that's how it's been with him this evening. I'd like to thank you, sir, for coming on the program today. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. And I sincerely appreciate this station for what they have done to democracy. Because throughout the democracy, they've been having people from different political parties. And I am grateful for this opportunity. The Almighty God continue to bless all of you in this station. Amen. And I wish you well. And I wish the management of staff of this station very well. Thank you. Very much. Amen. Okay, uh, we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll be talking about inclusion of persons living with disabilities on the program. Stay with us.